Um, my name's Martha, and I'm a software engineer at Etsy, but I, I telecommute from Franklin. Um, so I uh, work on the shipping labels team at Etsy, so I don't actually deal a lot with performance, but I'm currently vetting a lateral move into the performance team at Etsy, so this is kind of like a way for me to show them that I'm, I don't really like to nerd out about this stuff. So I'm here to talk to you today about Speedy. Uh, and I'm just kind of curious, by a show of hands, how many of you know about Speedy at all? Okay, so a fair number of you, that's awesome. Uh, so, Speedy is just a networking protocol, uh, much like HTTP is a networking protocol. Uh, it's built at Google, and uh, its main purpose is just to transport web content. Um, the difference uh, in Speedy is that it's basically the only really viable update to HTTP in the last like, 20 years or something. Um, and uh, it aims to reduce web page load latency and uh, round trip time and improve security all at once. Uh, so, uh, so HTTP, um, if you do any kind of, uh, a lot of like re request and response on the web, you know how painful it is and how long even just one extra round trip can, uh, like uh, how much uh, more pain that actually adds to the load time on your site. Um, and it's, it's just basically because uh, when the protocol was created in 1990, or proposed in 1991, they just didn't anticipate the kind of load that we would be experiencing today. Um, so if, for those of you that don't know, HTTP is just uh, a protocol for providing basic request and response semantics to fetch assets from a server. Um, it uh, can only support a single request per connection. That means you can only fetch one asset at a time. Uh, and it's basically a FIFO queue, so there's no kind of prioritization. It's just whatever the first asset was requested is the first asset that gets served. Um, so there, if you have like a assets of varying weight, um, like there's no way to really guarantee the order of which you could load those in. Um, I mean, I guess we could, I guess put them in the page in the order you want to load them in. But anyways, like there's a whole kind of complicated reason why. Anyways, so. Um, HTTP is just notoriously a bottleneck. Um, there are a few things that you can do nowadays, like modern browsers allow you to have multiple connections. I think up to six I, on some browsers, I think they're mostly different. So that's like the basic domain sharding scenario where you may have assets on like six different domains and then you ask for them at different hosts and then you kind of circumvent this one asset per TCP connection problem. Um, but that still kind of totally sucks. Um, Oh, another thing about HTTP that also um, they, well, you know, when this was proposed, there's no way they could have uh, anticipated our needs today. Uh, only the client can, can initiate requests. So even if the server is somehow aware contextually of something the client needs, they can't deliver it ahead of time. They have to wait on a request. Uh, and HTTP also has really large header files, uh, and they're in plain human readable text by default, so they're not compressed, uh, which is just kind of silly, uh, considering how many round trips you have to make. Um, and each round trip is very expensive. And also another thing that's interesting about headers is a lot of the fields on header files are redundant, like um, you, like the allow access origin, other things like that, you don't really need to define every time. The first time that it's uh, initialized, it, it won't change. Basically, it's static. So um, headers, like I was saying earlier, um, certain headers don't need to be recent. Um, and I think I said in the last slide, um, um, it, uh, HTTP allows data compression, but it is optional, um, which is, like I said, totally silly. Um, here are a couple of fields uh, or headers that, um, like I said, don't need to be sent every time, but are out of the box at least. So a whole lot has changed since 1991, um, but HTTP routers, caches, and appliances all depend on the current HTTP spec. Uh, we can't really change the basics of this protocol without just destroying the network as we know it. Uh, so that's where Speedy comes to the rescue. <laughs> Um, Speedy actually works kind of on top of HTTP TCP. It's really more of like a session layer, kind of like almost in between HTTP and TCP, really. I guess so on top's not super accurate there. Um, but it, all it does is it changes how the data is written to the network. Uh, it basically just changes the framing layer uh, on top of TCP. And TCP is totally optional, but that's just like the most common IP protocol. Um, and uh, it basically the way that it changes this framing uh, layer, it allows uh, compressed data to flow on concurrent streams at once. Uh, and Speedy is not uh, totally required to run an SSL, but it's definitely um, the best way not to like uh, invalidate any of your proxies. Uh, so that most people just use SSL to actually create the tunnels for Speedy to send your frames through. Um, and uh, like the end-to-end -end encrypted tunnel um, allows there to be like no or like interference or intervention between any of your nodes. So that's totally um, preferable if you can do it that way. 
Um, and how Speedy you know, reduces this latency, which is its whole purpose, uh, is like I said, by compressing headers, multiplexing multiple connections on one TCP connection. And you can actually uh, technically have an unlimited amount of multiple connections, which is super cool. Uh, and prioritization is uh, also really cool. Like I said, uh, basically HTTP is just like FIFO, where it's like the first request is the first response. Um, but Speedy allows us a few mechanisms for prioritizing uh, the order that those responses happen, but I'll get into that in just a minute. So, Speedy Sauce. Like I said, um, Speedy allows an uh, unlimited amount of uh, simultaneous connections, multiplex, and multiplex just means they're all happening on the same TCP connection, uh, and like, I don't know, I guess, instead of just doing the one request and response loop like we're all used to. Um, the packets are fewer, which is actually awesome. Uh, they're more densely packed and there are fewer of them sent. Uh, and the connection is bi-directional, like I said, uh, the, the server no longer has to wait for the client to request an asset. It can just push something on behalf, like on its own volition. Um, so, yeah, and there's like the header that actually does that. It's like called X sub resources or something. It's something you can define on the server. Um, and, uh, oh, and no, actually, no, this is, I, I misspoke. So actually the X sub resources header field is something called a server hint, which is super awesome. It can just hint to the client that this may be a resource that you could potentially want, um, but it doesn't actually force it on the client, which is really cool. So basically, Speedy just uh, implements all of these priorities uh, so the client can request as many items as it wants and uh, the server can assign a priority in response, um, which is super cool. So there are some caveats. Uh, this is not like a end all be all of web performance. Um, Speedy only optimizes on a per domain basis. So if you were to have all the assets sharded amongst multiple domains, it really wouldn't help you that much. Um, it uh, can't uh, reduce the number of TCP connections and multiplex, and multiplex them across multiple domains, basically. Uh, and I believe the average website could have up to 18 different domains uh, that are like hosting assets. So, um, but like at a site like Etsy, when you're loading, you know, potentially 50 images at once, then uh, and, and from a CDN, most likely, uh, it, there, that's probably where you're going to see the most benefit, where the HTTP request response cycle is actually the most costly. Um, also, uh, Speedy does not prevent scripts from blocking other resources. I don't know if you've read Steve Souter's book. I highly recommend it. Um, certain assets will block other assets from downloading at the same time. Uh, if, if it's a non-blocking asset, like different browsers act differently. It could potentially download like four in parallel or something unless it's like a blocking JavaScript file or something. Um, but Speedy doesn't do anything uh, in those cases. Um, and uh, you know, one reason that like a CSS file may block other rendering fi or other files from rendering is CSS could potentially import other CSS files, and so uh, the the rendering and layout engines in the browser kind of have to account for those cases where another asset may come in and totally repaint and all the layout. And you're, I hope, I don't know, you you look very yeah, okay. Everything's fine. Okay, good. Didn't want to misspeak on. That. Um, also, Chrome does some really cool things. Um, like I said, Speedy doesn't uh, out of the box, or it, it can't um, multiplex connections uh, amongst different domains, but Chrome actually will if they share the same IP address and certificate, which I think is pretty rad. Um, so uh, like I said, uh, Speedy works uh, most reliably over SSL. Um, so there is a latency penalty there with making that connection, um, but you know, the future of the web depends on more secure network connections anyway, so I don't, I don't fear that change at all. Uh, so, uh, you know, I prefaced this, uh, I didn't really talk about it very much, but I prefaced it with a question mark, like, yay, Speedy, because there have been a lot of blog posts out that basically, um, you know, think that maybe Speedy is overblown, or maybe, like, the, the perceived, like, performance gains aren't really that awesome, depending on your use case. Um, but I think it's really awesome, um, because now domain sharding could be totally obsolete, because it's kind of a pain in the ass anyways. Um, and uh, you know, I, everybody using SSL, like I, I can't see a negative use case there. Uh, and another just kind of fun byproduct is um, packet loss penalty is reduced because you're reducing the number of TCP connections. So Speedy sends uh, on average 40% fewer packets just in general. Uh, and the fewer TCP uh, connections means fewer chances to lose, uh, like the send packet where you just get into, I don't know, like the, the most costly kind of packet loss. And um, so Speedy's more efficient use of uh, TCP triggers um, will, uh, will trigger TCP's fast retransmit instead of using retransmit timers. I had to read that because there's no way I could regurgitate that on my own. But um, basically, um, it, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, Speedy's latency savings increase proportionally with the increase in packet loss, which is kind of a really awesome relationship to have if you're going to have packet loss. 
Um, and, and just like as an anecdotally, um, yeah, in, uh, in real life, packet loss is typically around 1 to 2%, and it still speeds it up 48% at 2% packet loss. Um, so, and one also really awesome uh, benefit about uh, Speedy is that it's just sitting there on top of TCP, so all of like the network congestion al algorithms that exist already in the network, um, you can just benefit from them silently. <laughs>